Amen. Here's what God's Word says. Whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, because they love to pray while standing in synagogues and on street corners so that people can see them. Truly I say to you, they have their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, do not babble repetitiously like the Gentiles, because they think that by their many words they will be heard. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Amen. You may be seated. Today's theme is Scheduled and Spontaneous Prayer. Here's a word of caution. Sometimes when churches start praying campaigns and we decide we're going to do something, we do a whole lot of talking about it. We get real excited about it at first. At first we're all on fire. And then sometimes we never get to really praying. We just talk about it. Y'all know what happens at work. Folk talk a good game but never get around to doing what they're supposed to do. And we don't want to be like that. So as we're going through and learning about prayer, you want to make sure that you start praying. Amen? Because praying is important. It's extremely important. Prayer can be scheduled and should be. Prayer can also be spontaneous and should be also. Why would we want to schedule prayer? I don't know, Reverend, I kind of like to just pray whenever the Spirit moves me. Well, you know, how many of y'all watch television? What if your favorite show didn't have a schedule? You wouldn't know where to find it, would you? All right, come on. Just hop all around the channels and different times. You'd be like, I'm going to stop watching this show because I can't find it. <laughs> but it has a set schedule so you know when the show is going to be played. When you go to the movies, don't they have movie time schedules so you know when they get there so you can get your popcorn and all that, sit down and watch the movie. How many of y'all have a schedule at work? You got a work schedule. Some of us have breaks that are scheduled and lunches that are scheduled. But we have a schedule that tells us when to come in and when to leave. We have schedules. How many of y'all drive cars? Y'all ever heard of scheduled maintenance on your car? You're supposed to, sometimes we ignore that, but you're supposed to get your car checked at certain times so stuff can get right so belts don't break. It's, why do we do all this stuff scheduled? Because it makes it consistent and we know when to do it. So we can do the same thing in prayer. We need to schedule a time to pray. Now, some of y'all say, Pastor, I can't get up in the morning. I didn't say get up in the morning and do it. You need to find a time that's right for you. For some people, it's middle of the day. Some people, it's early in the morning. Some people, it's mid-afternoon. Some people, it's night before they go to bed. But what you do is find a time where you can commit to praying to God. Find, find a time and a place. Here's what, this every night I'm going to sit down and do this. Now some folks are going to try to, you know, I'm going to do seven prayers a day. If you ain't doing one today, start with one. Amen? Amen? We know we do that. We go on diets and we give up every piece of food we like and wonder why it doesn't work. Because you didn't cut out too much. Hello? Take a little bit of time. You get consistent with that one time of praying. And then add the second one. Then maybe go to the third. Then first, you may be doing seven times eventually. But if you try that out front, you're going to just frustrate yourself. Uh, if you want to find that time. When we look at this scripture, Jesus was not condemning public prayer. He wasn't saying you couldn't pray in public. He wanted to make sure we knew who we were directing our prayer to. See, the people he's talking about, the hypocrites, they were interested in man acknowledging their ability to pray. I said it again. They want to show off. They want to get in church and let everybody know how well they can pray. They had all these flowery words. My son told me something last week. He said, Dad, I'm kind of liking this sermon series. I used to think that praying was for special people. Tell them the truth. He said, I hear them pray in church. I go, man, I can't pray like that. I don't know ever ask me to pray in church. But I, I can't do all that. But some folks, they can pray real good. They get in, boy, when you finish, you just, ooh, man, that's, it's so fancy. And then you can see what they do Monday through Saturday. Mm. That's why Jesus called them hypocrites. Because the Pharisees were famous for it. In fact, there's a story Jesus told. They were sitting there, 
and watching a Pharisee, and he's praying all holy and loud. He has his big robes on and fancy, and he pointed to a publican that was saying, Lord, thank you I'm not like this sinner over here. But I'm, you know, I'm so holy and sanctified. And the publican hit his chest and said, God, be merciful to me, the sinner. He always said, bow his head. And Jesus said, that's the prayer that I heard. That other one? You're just trying to get somebody to say you pray good. There's a difference. All right. Who are you praying to? What's the purpose of prayer? It's supposed to be I'm talking to God. So when I pray, I shouldn't worry about what y'all think and don't think. All right. When we hear people praying and struggle, we shouldn't go, well, that person can't pray. You better be quiet. Right. That may be the prayer God is hearing. Because it comes from their heart. So that's what God wants in prayer. He wants us to, to, when we pray, come from the heart. He wants to know that we're truly praying to Him. Prayer is not about us. It's about God. It's about His glory and His will. It's about Him doing things for us. It's not about stroking your ego. Sometimes we want to be known and, and seen. That's not what it's about. It's about knowing and pleasing God and having a relationship with God. So that's why you need to find a place to pray to God. That's why he said find a secret place. Find a place because it's just you and God. Mm -hmm. And schedule that time and let your family know, hey, from this time to this time, I'm going to be praying. I, I, I need that. If it's 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour, hour, I, I'm scheduling this time for prayer. I'm going to be off in my little closet or my car or wherever, and I'm going to pray to God. Set an alarm. Put it on your smartphone. Put it in your little calendar. It will remind you, okay, this is the time I've chosen to pray. When that reminder comes up, okay, I need to go pray. But schedule that time in secret because as you pray in secret and get closer and closer to God, if Reverend ever asks you to pray in public, you have a relationship and people will feel that relationship when you pray. Amen? Amen. Sometimes you can tell when folks have a relationship. They get up and pray and you can feel God's presence. My mother was like that. My grandma was like that. It's like she had a red line phone to God. Back on up and say, God, I need something. And God would say, hey, I know what you need. Hey, hello. I saw it happen. That's, that's what God wants to us. So we need to make a goal of scheduling that prayer out. Here's, a, here's some biblical examples of scheduled prayer. Psalm 55, 16. As for me, I will call out to God and the Lord will deliver me. During the evening, morning, and noon time, I will lament and moan, and he will hear me. That was David. Sounds like he prayed morning, noon, evening, morning, and noon time. Probably right around the time he, he ate breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we, we, how many of y'all have scheduled time you eat? Well, that's a good time to pray. Remind yourself, I need to pray. You say grace, but do you pray? Amen. Daniel 6.10. When Daniel realized that a written decree had been issued, he entered his home, where the windows of his upper room opened toward Jerusalem. Three times daily he was kneeling and offering prayers and thanks to his God, just as he had been accustomed to doing previously. Then those officials who had gone to the king came by collusion and found Daniel praying and asking for help before his God. Daniel had a scheduled time to pray. He got on his knees before God three times a day. And when they passed the law saying he couldn't do it, he did it anyway. Hello. Well, Pastor, I'm not Daniel. I know. But Daniel's example is there to let you know it can be done. And it should be done. Think about the power that, that flowed through Daniel's life. Think about the time when they threw him in there with the lion, lions right after he got caught praying. And the lions didn't touch him. That's prayer. How many of y'all got lions you're dealing with? Mm -hmm. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. You better pray. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The word of God says that the enemy goes out like a roaring lion, yes. seeking who he can devour. Yes, the enemy wants to devour you. And what's your, what's your weapon against him? Pray. Let God know you need so. Now, it takes 66 days to form a new habit. 66, I'm going to say 66 days. 66 days to form a new habit. 
So what that means is you need, if you're going to schedule this time, you need to do it for 66 days, and then it'll be so habitual you just do it without having to think about it. All right, all right. But I, I, my challenge to us is that we find a time today, think through it while you're watching the football game and eating the wings, and say, when am I going to dedicate my time to God? When am I going to give Him some time so I can specifically pray? And do that, and then mark on your calendars, count out 66 days, and you know this is when you know that that will become a habit where you won't even have to think about it. Amen? Amen. So that habit, here's the good thing about that kind of habit, it will change your life forever. When you start praying consistently to God, God will start to move in your life. And I'm warning you right now, don't be afraid for what's going to happen. You start praying and praying and praying, and you're going to see things happen you never dreamed of happening. Some of you have prayers you've been waiting on God to answer for years, and they're going to get answered. Hello? Some of y'all have been praying about different jobs and blessings and people getting saved and, and you know, raises on your job. You've been praying for healing, and God is going to meet you where you are. It's going to start happening. We're going to have to have a service where all we do is testify the whole service because we have so many blessings. I'm, I'm telling you. Y'all believe me? Amen. If you don't believe me, believe God. Yes. That when you dedicate yourself to doing this, God will bless you. He wants to answer your prayer. But you have to ask Him. Amen. Spontaneous prayer. This is something that happens when you need to pray. I've really started changing my tactics on this. You know, it used to be someone say, pray for me. I say, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll pray for you. And then I'd go home. And sometimes I remember, sometimes I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So you know what I started doing? Mm -hmm. Let's pray right now. All right. Yeah. All right. What? All right. Let's go. We can go break off into a room and pray. We need to pray. We're going to pray right now. Spontaneous, on the spot. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to forget and lie to somebody and yeah. say, I'll pray for you and forget it. to do it. Because right. the enemy, that's what he wants. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray right now. And, and pray. And let God lead you. That's that spontaneous prayer. And you need those kind of prayers. I mean, y'all know sometimes you're driving on the freeway and you need to start praying because folk are driving like Amen. 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 Yes, yes. Uh huh. How many times it worked? Somebody got on your last nerve and you need to pray that you don't well, less about it. Sometimes your, your children get on your nerves so much. Oh, Lord, I got to pray. Before I kill these children. Amen. I love my children. Well, there were times, and they're getting better now, there were times, ooh, man. Let me tell you, I love them. Love hurts sometimes. I love She's trying to hide. That's spontaneous prayer. And if we start to practice that, we'll get better and better at it. And you don't need to have anything fancy. How many of y'all can talk in here? Who can talk? Who can talk? Okay, so we all can talk, right? So that means you can all pray. Don't think I got to do a whole lot of Father Gods and make it all sound fancy and, you know, I need to, you know, change and start calling God God and all, you know. Hello? That's not what it's about. It's about you talking to God and having a simple conversation. That's it. And you start to schedule your time and then spontaneously pray as well, God will start to do some things. Here's what will happen. You'll find that specific needs start to get answered. You'll find that confusion starts going away. You'll find that crisis and sin starts leaving your life. Stress starts to leave and God will start blessing you all over the place. Burdens will be lifted off of you. Your requests will be answered and you'll start rejoicing because you'll start to see God move in your life like never before. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of walking walking this walk and not seeing God's power demonstrated in my life. It says in Mark that these signs shall follow those who believe. That means I should be able to lay hands on the sick and they recover. That's what it says. Why is that not happening more? Because we don't believe. And we're not praying. And we're not asking God. You don't need to be an evangelist or some anointed guy on television to do that. It said, these shines will follow those that believe. How many of y'all believe? Amen. Then God right. wants to answer your prayers. All right, all right, amen. Is that simple? 
Amen. That's the way for the pastor. Start praying. Amen. You'll be amazed at what God does. In fact, sometimes you'll find that the most humble person gets the most effective prayer through. Why? Because they, they don't know any better. Mm -hmm. They just trust God. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. They don't know any better. They don't have a big education and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, sometimes we get to philosophize and stuff. They just pray in faith. Yeah. God answers. It's that childlike faith in God. Mm. He said, if you don't come to him as a child, okay. think about the children in our church. Do they trust their parents? Totally. Yeah, totally. They trust their parents. Why? Because they're the parents. They figure these folks love me, so they will take care of me. That's why sometimes the kids do some of the stuff they do, because they know mom and dad's got them. Mm. Yeah. Hello. I'm a dad's praying for me, and sometimes you're like, why is that person trying to jump off there? Because they figure you're going to try to catch him. Hmm. Have that same faith in God and pray, believing, and what you'll find out is God will start to answer prayers. Here's what Isaiah 55, 9 says. Just as the sky is higher than the earth, so my deeds are superior to your deeds, and my plans superior to your plans. Let me say that again. Some of y'all didn't catch that. My deeds are superior to your deeds. My plans superior to your plans. Whatever plan you have, God has something better for you. Wherever you're at right now, God has something better for you. You just need to believe it and pray for it. Matthew 7, 11. If you then, although you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good, good, give, give good, good gifts? I well, that's not enough. Your Father in heaven, give good gifts to those who ask me. Just ask. Mm, all right. How many of y'all deny your children what they need? Child going, Daddy, I need some new shoes. You ain't get no shoes, boy. I used to walk three miles uphill on the snow. No shoes. No, we go get them shoes, right? So if we do that and we're not God, what do you think God will do if we ask Him for stuff? Huh? That's what he said right there. I'll do it. Matthew 11, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That means if you're going through some stuff, lean on the Lord. We just sang it. Lean in. Lean. I got to lean on God because I can't handle this by myself. All right. James 4, 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly. So you spend it on your passions. That sometimes that's like when we're, we're claiming that Mercedes Benz. We go out there and say, God, I need a Mercedes. No, you can't. No, you can't afford to pay for that thing. You get mad because God didn't give it to you. He's trying to tell you something. God ain't going to answer that prayer. Because you're asking selfishly. You're asking for the wrong motive. You should be asking for things that line up with my will that, that I want to do to help bless you and bring glory to me in my name. Amen? Amen? That's how you see answers to prayers. When you line your prayer up with what you want God. What did Jesus say in the garden right before he got crucified? I don't want to go to this God, but not my will. Your will be done. Mm. All right. That's part of the rain. God, if it's your will, bless me with this. I don't know what you all, but I had some ladies I liked in college and throughout my life I was praying to God for. I was so glad he said no. I look back now and I think, ooh, man, I, um, I had myself in some trouble. But God gave me the woman he wanted me to have. We've right. gone on 21 years of marriage, still happy, still love each other, still like each other. Because that's what God wanted me to have. You know what I needed? I didn't. I was looking at something different. Now I look back and go, ooh, man, you saved me. You know, y'all got things like that where you ask for it, you're glad God said no. Yeah. Ask with the right motives and you will. So schedule your prayer. I repeat after me, I'm scheduling prayer. Scheduling prayer. Scheduling prayer. Scheduling prayer. Today. Today. I'm going to schedule prayer. Today. Today. We're going to do it for how many days to form the habit? 66 days to form that new habit. So I can have that scheduled time. When, when someone asks you to pray for them, when are you going to pray for them? Right then and there. There's power in that. That's a testimony. You'll be surprised what God can do through your prayers when you pray with someone spontaneously. Their faith may be risen because you're praying for them. Amen? Amen.
Amen. Let's pray.